In this tutorial, we'll discuss about research questions and variables. You might ask, why is it important to have a good research question? Having a good research question helps you as a researcher in several ways. First, it helps you set boundaries to a research project. A well-articulated research question provides you a clear information about the focus of your research. Let's take this research question for example. What do students feel about learning? This research question might be too broad if you compare it to What do first-year undergraduate students feel about learning leadership? The second research question have a clear information about which group of students that we want to study and the learning topic. As you can see from the second research question, a good research question also clarifies the research direction. It informs you on the data that you need to collect. If we look back at our research question, we can clearly tell that we need to collect data from first-year undergraduate students, and the data that we want to collect is their perception about learning leadership. As you begin working and writing your research question, you will realize that the process is cyclical it is very normal for you to write and then rewrite and then rewrite again your research question to make it more focused and more clear. Typically, in the process of writing a research question, the initial research question is broad. Most of the times it is generated through literature review and maybe general reading and discussions with supervisor. As you read and discuss more, you will start refining your research question and maybe after you do more discussions and perhaps look into the preliminary result of your data analysis, you might want to make some adjustments to your research question. In the final process, you will get a clearer and more focused research question. And usually, this research question will be very helpful in helping you structuring further analysis and the final write-up for your research paper. So what makes a good research question? A good research question should meet the criteria of FINER. FINER is an acronym for Feasible, Interesting, Novel, Ethical, and Relevant. Feasible. The research question should address a study that can be investigated without expanding an undue amount of time, money, or energy. Ask yourself, Will you be able to access the subject? Do you know how to analyze the result? Or do you know anyone who can help you analyze the result? If there is a cost, is it something that you can afford? And most importantly, will you be able to complete the whole research within a specific time frame? Interesting. You want to be surprised by what you find out. If you already know the answer to the question, you don't need to do the study. Novel. Ask yourself what new values that the findings from your research could bring to the scientific community. Will it confirm, review, or extend previous findings? Ethical. Will your study cause physical or psychological harm or damage to your research participants? Lastly, 
relevant. Think about the impact that the study will bring to you and the community. Ask yourself, is it worth spending your time, effort, and resources to answer this research question? When asking a research question, it is important that you clarify the terms that you have in the research question. There are three ways that you can clarify the terms in your research question. First, by using constitutive definition, that is the dictionary definition. Second, by using example. The third is by using operational definition. Let me give you an example. Let's try to clarify the term leadership. According to dictionary, the term leadership can be defined as the action of leading a group of people or an organization. We can further clarify the term by providing examples. People who have leadership roles could be hospital directors, company CEOs, college deans, or maybe department chairs. We can be more specific in clarifying our terms by providing operational definition. Typically, in an operational definition, you will see ways to assess the operational definition. As you can see here, Houghton et al. 2012 provided the abbreviated self-leadership questionnaire as the tool to measure the definition. In the discussions of research questions, you will frequently hear the term research variables. A research variable is a characteristic that changes or varies among the research participants of a study. Now, if the characteristics is the same among all research participants, it is called as constant, not a variable. I think it is easier to explain research variable by providing you an example. Let's take a look at this research question. What is the impact of motivational emails on thesis completion? Let's assume that a researcher wants to study the impact of motivational emails on graduate students' thesis completion. The researcher then divide the students into three groups. The first group will receive weekly emails, the second group will receive monthly emails, and the third group will not receive any email at all. And then at the end of the study, the researcher will measure how fast they complete their thesis. From this example, thesis completion is a variable because we expect to see a variation of thesis completion rate among the three groups. The frequency of motivational emails is also a variable. We can clearly see here that there are three groups that vary in terms of the frequency of emails that they receive weekly, monthly, and no email. However, the status of being a graduate student is not a variable. It is a constant. Typically, there will always be characteristics that social researchers want to maintain the same. Other than the graduate student status, perhaps in this example, we also want to ensure that students from both groups take the same graduate courses and receive the same writing support. This is to avoid the possible effect of extraneous variables. In the next section, we will discuss about dependent, independent, and extraneous variables. In quantitative studies, you may frequently hear the terms independent and dependent variables. Independent variable is the variable that is studied to
to assess its effect or impact on other variables. This is the variable that researchers manipulate to assess the changes in the dependent variable. The dependent variable, as the name implies, is the variable that depends on the effect or impact of the independent variable. The value of this variable is the result of the independent variable. Let's take a look at the previous research question. Based on the research question and the design of the study, we can tell that the frequency of motivational emails is the independent variable and thesis completion rate is the dependent variable because by changing the frequency of motivational emails, we expect to see some differences in terms of thesis completion rate. Please note that these terms, independent and dependent variables, are only applicable to inferential statistics, such as t-tests, ANOVA, and regressional analysis. The terms are not applicable for descriptive studies or correlational studies that do not study causality between the variables. In regressional analysis, sometimes researchers use different terms. Instead of independent variable, they use predictor variable. Instead of dependent variable, they use outcome variable. So what is extraneous variables? Extraneous variables are the other variables that may have an effect or impact on the dependent variables being studied. If we take a look at our previous research question, gender, age, research background, and types of research of the graduate students could, to a point, impact the student's thesis completion rate. So we want these extraneous variables to be controlled. There are several approaches to control extraneous variables. Two of them are by holding the extraneous variables constant and by doing random sampling. Now, doing random sampling does not eliminate extraneous variables, but it ensures that the extraneous variables are distributed between all research groups. The discussions of variables is not complete without discussing about categorical and continuous variables, or commonly known as levels of measurement. Research variables could be classified into categorical and continuous variables. Categorical variables could be further divided into nominal and ordinal variables, while continuous variables could be divided into interval and ratio variables. Nominal variables are variables that have two or more categories and this type of variable only have attributes but without ranks or order. Examples of this variable are sport jersey numbers, race, gender, or color. For example, green is not higher or better than red. Jersey number one is not better or less skilled than jersey number two. Ordinal variables are variables that have two or more categories. However, unlike nominal variables, the categories in ordinal variables have a logical order. Here are some examples. Top 5 TV shows, educational levels, Likert scale from totally disagree to totally agree. Although we could rank the categories, there is no meaningful distance between one rank with another. Here's an example. The distance between strongly disagree and disagree is not 
half of the distance between strongly disagree to neutral. Interval variables are variables which values could be measured along a continuum. Examples of interval variables are the time of the day, calendar years, temperature, and liquor scale. Unlike the previous two variables, there is a meaningful distance between each value in this variable. Here's an example. Two hours of a clock are twice of an hour. Three hours are one-third of nine hours. Please keep in mind that interval variable does not have absolute zero. This is what it means with not having absolute zero. If you look at the clock and you see 0000, 000, 000 AM, this is typically for analog clocks. That does not mean that there is no hour. If you look at a thermometer and it says zero degree Fahrenheit, that does not mean that there is no temperature. The last variable is ratio variable. It is almost the same with interval variable. Examples of ratio variables are total income, number of people, number of courses. What makes this variable different from interval variable is it has absolute zero. Here's an example. Zero dollar means no money. Zero people means no people. We've been discussing about research question and research variable. From the benefit of having a good research question to the criteria of a good research question to the various types of variables. Now, do you have a good research question?